to, yep. to a quick intro. Okay, so g'day, g'day Noob Spiro community. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm joined by Josh from This Ocean Life TV podcast. Mm. And uh, I've been privileged enough to be a guest on his show, so it's good to return. So how are you there, Josh? <laughs> Uh, Shrek, I'm great, man. And I appreciate you being a victim on my podcast. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'm stoked, so stoked to be with you guys. So thanks for having me, man. No worries. Now, um, your podcast, like it says on your site, you know, our mission at the Social Life TV is to capture the great stories and perspectives of people around the world who have made the ocean a central part of their lives. Our podcasts are intended to, uh, our podcast interviews are intended to be no frills, low budget and unscripted to provide the essence of our guest stories. And I've listened to paddleboarders, surfers, spiros on your show. You're kind of, you're covering a huge um, range of different water sports, that's for sure, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and that's kind of, you know, it's true. And it's it's kind of like mimics, I guess, my own life in the water where, you know, spearing is one passion, obsession amongst mm -hmm. a bunch of others, you know, surfing and diving and boating and, uh, you know, paddle boarding, all those things. And so for me, I love talking stories and hearing stories from all, from people doing all those different disciplines, you know? And so doing the podcast like that, it's just, uh, again, it's, it's sort of like, I don't have enough time and money to do all the rad things in the ocean that are available to all of us. <laughs> yeah. And so I live, I live vicariously through others who, who do things that I, you know, don't, they might not have a chance to do, you know? So that's really it. It's, it's quite fun. Sure. So you created a podcast that scratches your own itch and you just like tackle yeah. um, all the different water sports that you love yourself. I love it. Yeah, it's cool. You know, and, and everybody's got stories, you know, it's funny. And, and you, you probably get this too. Like you reach out to somebody and you're like, Hey, I'd love to have you on as a guest to talk about things. And some people go, why would you want me? I'm just, you know, but everybody's got cool stories, you know, and it, you could be the gnarliest guy or girl in the world, or you could just be, the dude down the street who goes out and does his thing and everybody's got a great story to tell, you know, and, and I love hearing them all and I love sharing them all. And like when you coming on, just hearing your story of getting in the water to where you're at today with the new Spiro podcast, man, it's all just, I just love all of it. You know, it's just yeah. fun. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's great to return seven, have you on my show as well, man. So awesome. Yeah. I've listened to a couple of episodes on your show. Like I even like listening to like some of the long distance paddleboarders, which I, like it's not a sport I'm going to do, but I like just sort of checking yep. out hearing their story. Like, it's just crazy, like, you know, pad paddling 30 kilometers on a board between islands and stuff like that. And yeah. Just normal people, though, and um, and they just love what they do just as much as we love experience. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, indeed. And one thing, too, that I've really, I think I knew deep down because I do a lot of these different sports. But after speaking with folks, we all have a common theme you know, which is there's a sense of flow of being in the water, whether you're locked in on a fish holding onto a reef or you're sailing a sailboat between, you know, in the middle of the ocean or you're surfing a wave. It's all kind of the same. The, the activities are different. But yeah. when that happens, the rest of the world it ceases to matter. Right. You're in that. Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, the cool yeah. thing. I really, we all have that common bond and that's just the ocean. That's, that's mm -hmm. like the ocean gives us that, whether you're shooting a fish, whatever it is. And that's why it's so neat. We can all, I love that part of just relating to all those, everybody doing that, you know, having that in common. It's really cool. For sure. I think that's, that's definitely something that grabs you. It's that hundred percent in the moment. You remember yeah. everything and like yep. everything's so alive. There's no like other things like running in the background like your your ram is just fully dedicated to doing what you're doing right now we've talked to a couple of guys on the show like um cameron kirkconnell and it's like tim mcdonald and they talk about being like um idiot savants like they they just have like a photographic memory for places and locations and fish and i think that's the power of the human mind when it's 100 percent focused yeah. on one thing in one moment and uh yep. it, yeah it's definitely um you know we're sort of making mindfulness and just putting some actual wheels on it. And like it, we, we, you don't have to try to be mindful when you're spearfishing, you just do it. And I guess it's the yeah. same. Yeah, no, you're dead on, man. And, and it's interesting while there's that common theme across those different activities, I, I would say that for me personally, that sense of flow and meditation, Zen, however you want to call it is actually mm -hmm. kind of magnified underwater. 
I mean, a good example, and I, I'm sure if folks listen to this will agree, you, you're you spearfishing, you take a breath, you dive down. Now, you're looking for something, and in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, you're monitoring your breath, how much time you think you have, how you're feeling, when should I start to go up, how deep am I? That's always kind of in the back of your head, you know, for the most part. But, I mean, we've all had this. You shoot that fish, and maybe it's under a crack, or it's not mm-hmm. just a simple ascent to the surface. And you're, you're messing with it. You're trying to get your spear out and the fish is wedged. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, I've been under here, not even thinking about my breath, not even real. I don't, I don't even need to go get that breath because yeah. I'm so consumed with getting this fish out or in the moment. Yeah. And, you know, once you get back to the surface, you're like a little bit out of breath. But my point <laughs> is, is, is that moment, like you said, man, you're, you're in a different world and things that usually matter don't even like the recognition of hey i'm almost out of breath i should go up it's been a minute or whatever that is it's like sometimes you can go yeah. way past that it's cool yeah yeah it's other thing is like you know when you're explaining the fishing experience or a lot of these things people always ask you the same questions like oh do you see sharks or how long do you hold your breath these are kind of the same ones like as long as i need to it's kind of your answer you know like, like you're, just <laughs> yeah, saying, right. you're not you're not going oh well, i've been down here for um 65 yeah. seconds uh yeah you know you just you just do do what you do and get it done. You do what you, uh, that's right yeah, cool. look let's dig into your story man so obviously like you love the water you like all facets of the water you i believe you work in the water industry look just tell us a little bit about your background and you know where did it all start for you where did this uh this love affair with the ocean start yeah cool man you know i um I just grew up in the water with my folks being like a Southern California family, grew up surfing and we moved to kind of Northern California to get away from the craziness of, you know, uh, uh, this big city. And I was just, you know, my mom will tell a story. I actually mentioned I was coming on to speak with you tonight. She's like, well, make sure you tell the story of when you were two years old and we threw you on a boogie board and you were just, you know, you were on your back, just washed around the waves. It was just like this natural thing for me from the start you know and i remember some of my early memories as a kid like a grom like four or five years old just like imagining being out in the ocean with whales and dolphins and diving and and doing everything it was just always there for me and i was fortunate to have a family that was you know relatively ocean focused you know um and they would take me to the beach i did junior lifeguards and all things water and you know really fortunate um and just always had that in my life, you know, and surfing was a big thing. And then the spearfishing part, you know, I was always fascinated by it. I did never had until, you know, a little bit later in life, the means, that's quite the means, but people around me who I can go with, you know, yeah, I was one sure. to do it. Um, I mean, my earliest kind of <laughs> recollection was as a, I was probably in my teens and uh, where I'm at in Santa Cruz in California, the waters kind of rarely clear you know it's like 10 foot of visibility and you're like wow this is epic you know and so it's (laughs) you take you take what you can get really and i remember one i was in my teens and i remember i really wanted to go spearfish because the water was clear i had a mask and a snorkel and that was pretty much it some fins i had no spear gun i know nothing and um i had 20 surfboards but i didn't have a spear gun you know and i remember taking the the handle off of like a, a shovel you know i broke it off and i had kind of hammered in long nails and odd angles at the end of this broomstick yeah. as like a, a very, very caveman oriented rudimentary killing device. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and of yeah, course yeah, yeah. got in the water and it didn't do, it didn't do anything, you know, <laughs> I think I wounded a couple yeah. perch, you know, et cetera. Uh, yeah. Um, but that just got me excited and, you know, I, I, I moved on and, and ended up, pursuing a, d- a degree in college with marine biology, um, always surfed, always did a lot of stuff in the ocean, but just never had, you know, it's interesting as you look back, the influences um, and opportunities available to you based on, you know, your community, your family, your friends. I didn't have that spearfishing kind of um, uh, influence available who like, hey, here, here's a gun. Here's how you do this. Yeah, yeah. It was later in life, you know, my 20s when I was doing all other stuff and just I was, you know, I don't know what, what it was. I was like, I actually remember saw a, th- a pole spear, Hawaiian sling, three prong yeah. at a garage sale at somebody's house down the street. And 
I just bought it for five bucks because I was like, that thing just is cool. Yeah, and well, now that I have this thing, I've always wanted one, you know, and yeah, yeah. now I had one and I started using it and uh, it kind of just went forward from there, you know. Yeah, nice, nice. Cool, man. So what age do you reckon you, did you buy the Pulse bit? I think I was late twenties, you know, I mean, I'm 44 now. So, I mean, I, I, I think I, you know, and all the other activities get in the way, you know, there's, it's, it's a blessing and a curse to have a lot of different interests in the ocean, a lot of different yeah, yeah. interests in life. Cause sometimes it's like, okay, the water's clear, but there's waves, yeah. uh, there's fish, uh, and I'm, do I grab the spear gun? Do I grab the surfboard? You know, and you're just, uh, you have this paral analysis paralysis type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I've been at it for, you know, a good, you know, decade and a half relatively seriously, you know, with my local waters. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I pursued a degree in college in marine biology. Um, mm -hmm. It's very challenging to actually make a career out of that in my area where I'm at because it's extremely expensive to live, California, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. It kind of has to put that aside and do more of like, you know, high tech oriented stuff while pursuing all that fun ocean stuff, you know, on the side for my recreation. Mm. Now I remember like I got off the show with you. I think I did an episode recording with you maybe two or three months back. And um, I remember you heading out with some blue water hunting techniques. You were like, man, I headed yeah. out for my first session, like proper blue water yeah. hunting. Have you got any advice? And uh, <laughs> I dropped a couple of tips on you and, uh, but you went out with some boys and you guys just had a blast, man. Tell, tell us about that day. It was great, you know, and, and I appreciate you sharing because, you know, when I asked you that, because I was like, dude, tell me, what do I do? Because, you know, wh where I am, again, in our part of California, blue water hunting is not a thing. A, we, yeah, don't, yeah. Have, we don't have the pelagic species. Um, very, very rarely do we. Uh, and B, it's like... It, the water's just green and cold and so we're we're fishing we're hunting on reefs and there's there's a lot of this everywhere so it's yeah. it's fish that are pretty sedentary it's on reefs it's kelpie kelp forest you know it's it's classic california it's gorgeous it's freaking awesome and so when uh, a friend of mine said hey i got a, a trip booked on uh, i mean it, hey let me back up one sec down south southern california the last couple of years the tuna the pelagics has been uh, other level like and i don't yeah, know because yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit far away but from folks i've talked to it's like you know when they say the good old days he's like well mm. you know and most people said this these are the good old days this is 60 yeah. years ago you're like oh but it was so much better before everybody was out in the water well it's actually almost as good if not better right now for the guys who know uh, so it's other level right and so and i've been watching it up here and you know it's just i haven't been able to pull the trigger to go down you know pun intended and so we went down and here's me myself another buddy and a couple other guys who spend the majority of our days you know pulling yourself through kelp looking at nice ling cod but there's not a ton of challenge there because they're not swimming away. They're just staring you down and you could take 10 seconds to orient your shot and, you know, yeah, yeah. then to go do blue water hunting. So, you know, I was asking you, man, what do I, how, this is a different type of diving, you know? And so, you know, it was rad. I mean, it was, it was a Mad Max, uh, <laughs> adventure, you know, it's like, got the <laughs> call. The yeah. It really was like one of those cool things where it was like, got in the car, went down, Got in late, st slept for three hours, got on the boat at San Diego Harbor. A great crew, um, Kyle Faust. Uh, I had him on my podcast. He's one of the Omer America guys. He's a he's, he's you know he's the product manager. He's a he's a spear guide. We just got yeah. so lucky that that crew was other level. You know, Guardian oh. Charters. I'm gonna plug him. But for it was so cool because, it, and you know everybody listening, when you go pursue something different. It's like just trying is is almost is just is so much fun. Now, if you get a fish, you're like, oh, I mean, it's it's like Christmas comes early, but just to be out in water that's a warm, we don't get that. B clear, we don't get that, and <laughs> C deep, you know, this is blue water. So yeah, yeah. a lot of people listening are like, what are you talking about? I do that all the time. But for guys who spend the majority of their day groveling through kelp and pulling yourself along reefs. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was cool. And, you know, I, I know the story is going long, but 
the point right. of it was to see, and, and everybody I think can relate when you when you go after a new species, and it's not just, and it's like the the XL versions that we all mm -hmm. want, you know, that mm -hmm. we all care about. And for me, being a guy who's seeing you know two hundred pound bluefin tuna rolling on the surface you know 20 meters from your boat i mean it's it's just like whoa i never thought i'd even see one yeah. you know and then uh you know we're able to get in and it's a different type of diving you know people who do this and you have tons of listeners here and i think you as you're well as well it's like you know these fish have been hammered for a while they've been in the same spot so hook and line guys are on them the spear fishermen were on them for multiple months so these things were skittish you know and yeah you'd look out and you'd see a boil and they'd be hammering some bait. And so we'd, we'd motor over and we tried that a couple of times. And as soon as you got close to the boat, they'd be gone. So you could tell yeah. they were skittish. And so, you know, Kyle, the, the captain's savvy. He's been doing this forever. He's all right, here's the deal. You know, and, and when you, know, you jump in the water and just punch a dive and see if you'd see him and we didn't, they just bail. So he's like, Hey, all right, here's the deal. We're going to get close, cut the motor and you guys are gonna have to jump in the water quiet and kick your ass off, you know, 30, 40 meters away to where we think they are and then punch a dive, you know? And that's, you know, I mean, you know how that is. It's like, there's no, when you're kicking through the water on the surface, mm -hmm. your guns are loaded, you, you drop in, the fish are, you know, the boil is or was 30, 40 meters away. That surface swim, that's like freaking running through like, snow you know it's like <laughs> you're winded yeah. and then yeah. it's like you gotta dive. just dive and that's very different than the reef diving where you sit at the top that link cod's still down there he's not going anywhere because they never leave and so i could mm. take a breath i could take two minutes i could have a sandwich if i wanted and get my breath and chill and so mm. that part was was really it was fun it was exciting it was slightly scary at times you know it was very very different you know it was yeah. cool cool man what was your what were like did you did you did you get any good fish yeah yeah it was great because my buddy who had invited me had you know bluefin tuna were not even on my radar because mm -hmm. it just weren't i always would like to but it just wasn't one of those like tangible species to go after because plenty of excuses but just wasn't in my radar my my geographic yeah. range any of that and so he on the other hand down the street from me he'd been thinking about it for 10 years 15 years <laughs> he won one yeah. and so it was so awesome because you know i was hoping to see one in the wild mm -hmm. i was hoping to get a shot that'd be mm -hmm. even better boy if i actually hit one that'd be like you know whoa so he really wanted it and it was awesome because he got the shot so we actually we, we roll up on a school and they weren't freaking out they weren't hitting bait and it was pretty, it was amazing, you know, like seeing wildlife like that. Two, his was a hundred. These were, there was 200 pounders guys were getting, they were, wow. and they were just magnificent animals. You know, they're just freaking magnificent animals. And so they went down, we take turns and, you know, jumping in, he went down, came up, missed a shot, reloaded went back down and shot one and it was really cool because he goes he popped up and you know we're looking everybody's we're waiting because he's really close to the boat 20 meters maybe so we could see him he goes i got one i think it's about 40 pounds you know <laughs> we're like we're like oh great that's and we're just so stoked that we have a fish on the line now yep. you know and um <laughs> and you know how deceiving it is to make a judgment call in the size of something underwater it's like <laughs> it's just i'm yeah, really yeah. bad at it it's, you especially know. in blue water and you're not familiar but, oh yeah. yeah man it's like is that thing two meters away or is that five yeah. meters away you know and is it this big or that big it's 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 one of those things where it's like you got to do it to learn it so he was fighting the fish and and you know i i'm just watching waiting i'm frothing we're so excited and kyle the boat captain's like dude that's not 40 pounds man he's it's you know two three four or five minutes the thing's so deep we can't get down you know, it's got a couple of <laughs> on it. His buddy can't get down to get another shot because it's, you know, it's pretty deep. And suddenly he brings it back to the boat. You know, maybe it's five, ten minutes. And uh, and I'm like, holy shit, that thing is not 40 pounds. It's, 
the least 80 though the head of it is as big as him and this creatures are so magnificent you know we waited at the end it was 95 oh, and wow. uh it was so rad you know for all of us we all have our you know this is a big thing i love about you guys is one of your questions on your with your guests is you know what's that one critter that you want or that goal you know that you're really after and that was his you know and to see yeah, that yeah. You know, I didn't care. I didn't even see a fish in the water. I got, I yeah, think yeah. I got, I didn't see one, but it didn't matter just to see. It was like that team ex experience of getting that fish and to see somebody who's wanted it so for so long get one. And he was so stoked. You know, it was, it was really fulfilling for everybody else. You know, it was neat. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can 100% relate. I've been out with a go, um, on a boat and I knew the skipper and I had shot yellowtail before. And three yeah. other guys wanted their first yellow tail. We knew they were on. I shot one the previous week. And so our whole mission was just to get these three guys on. By the end of the day, they all had one each. We, we, all, we all got one each. There were five yellow tails, but they were, wow. they were all decent, you know, 20, 25 pound plus. And, yeah. uh, and all those guys, just the grins, ear, ear to ear. Like it's, just, it's just awesome to be around your mates when they're just that stoked, when they, yeah. when they hit that goal, you know, because, um, you know, we – Quite often on Instagram, you just see the photos of the dudes with the fish, and you don't get all the background to it. Yeah, so, I mean, this is where the podcast is great because we kind of get that. So you may got a ninety-five pound bluefin tuna. That's a phenomenal fish of a lifetime. I'd love yeah. to get one myself. Actually, uh, what about yourself? What What did you? How did you go? Huh, uh, you know, it was. I didn't even see one. I, uh, I, so it, it was really, and that's part of the allure, you know, and, and I tell this and I know we'll talk about it a little bit with, you know, having some younger guy, younger, the next generation out there, but that's one thing that, that for me, it's this weird thing. Like the anticipation of going yeah, yeah, is yeah. almost better than actually, I shouldn't say better. It's just, it, that's the juice of go of the anticipation is high than actually going and missing and striking out that almost like amplifies mm -hmm. your stoke and excitement and frothing to go again, you know? And, and <laughs> so while, yeah. yeah, I would have loved to got one to get yeah. one. I, you know, I actually am okay that I didn't because I want to think about it some more. I want to want it more because it was thrown yeah, on me yeah, yeah. days later. I was on the boat and I loved it. It was killer. But you know, when you're sitting there sleeping about it and you're thinking about it and like, I just want to like really, really, really obsess on it. <laughs> so when I do get one, it's even sweeter, you know, but part of it is, and it was, you know, hunting, hunting, anything, especially underwater, I don't care. You know, they all, all fish, they have, they, they, they force you to, um, you know, employ certain tactics to be successful. Mm -hmm. Fish, flat fish, pelagics you know, they all have their thing, you know, and, sure. and learning a new thing, a new tactic is that's so much fun, especially when you have no idea. I was counseled. You told me some stuff. The guys in the boat told me some stuff, but yeah. it's like, you're trying to put it all into practice. Yeah, for sure. It's like riding a new bike. It's like, yeah, it's a yeah, different yeah. kind of bike. It's a similar bike than the one you got, but it's slightly different. So you gotta, yeah. you're going to fail for a while, you know? Um, yeah. But I remember, so, but at one point when we kind of understood, like, you see these fish, you stop the boat, you get in the water, you kick hard, and then you punch a dive, and then, you know, you see, and we had seen them, I remember this, because I'm like, I got really kind of focused, and every now and then you really kind of focus yourself, okay, mm -hmm. here's what I need to do, here's how I'm going to, just the whole kind of, I don't know, you kind of came to Zen, I'm like, here's how I need to act to get one of these fish you know, after seeing it happen yeah, and yeah. seeing the fish act and here they were kind of mellow they're off the distance i saw them kind of moving one way so i just started kicking i just jumped in the water i was like i'm not waiting for anybody and i started heading yeah. and i'm not kidding you man it's one of those and this is why i'm going back and i'm gonna probably go back 10 times before i get one actually get one i mm -hmm. saw their backs rolling and these are yeah. again you know his was a hundred there was 200 guys were getting 200 pounders and you could see these backs and i was probably man I, i'm not five meters away 10 meters max and i saw them and they were weren't moving fast they weren't frothing they were just doing that cruising thing uh -huh. and i was like okay i have like and i saw them 
you know, and you, when you're at eye level of the water, man, it's so hard to see like kind of anything, but I could see the backs. So I was like, oh, wow, I'm right there. I'm going to do two or three kicks. I'm going to mm-hmm. slide in. And I'm going to just yeah. go yeah. dive and I'm going to be right there. They're not going to know it. And sure enough, I looked up, saw the backs, put my head down, a couple kicks, put my head up again, got a breath. And all of a sudden, the water that was a little bit bumpy because of the fish was now dead glass. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> flat. And uh, I was like, oh, where'd they go? And I just dove anyway. Just who knows? They went down and there's nothing. I came back up and it was like they had never yeah. been there. You know, and I knew, and guys from the boat were like, dude, you were so close. We thought you were like about to like come up and wave your hand like you shot one, but they just freaking ghosted. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Tuna in particular are real buggers to that. I mean, sometimes when you get a moving school, you can kind of intercept them, and you know, the boat can maybe drop you off on an intercept line like 100 or 150 meters up from where about where they're headed, and then you can kind of, um, you can burly and do different things, but I, I haven't had any luck with it either yet. And I can yeah. completely relate to your thing. I think one, <laughs> one thing I'm getting out of like your story too is, is a powerful thing that a lot of guys that have been doing this for a long time don't think about, and that's um, the setup. You know, like seeing a fish and how they behave and coming up with a plan, sort of like visualizing that plan internally and then like, implementing that plan and then sometimes yeah. it doesn't come to things so then you That's right you iterate you think about it you analyze yeah. it you, you adapt and then you try something new again and like you know that process for every species is is um is an yeah. ongoing thing it's one of the great things about the sport like you said it's just like you constantly there's constant new challenges there so this was your challenge with the tuna and like you said i love the fact that you've just enjoyed the process and uh and it's made you hungry for more in the future because i think that's a big appeal spear fishing it's not necessarily what you've already shot it's what you have yet to shoot in the future so that's for good yeah. lesson, man. yeah that's- thanks man yeah i agree you know it's like the pursuit it's just like being humbled that was what was cool too like i got my ass handed to me that day you know <laughs> uh and i know there are guys who you know over time you'd figure it out and would you know dial it in and probably go get one maybe two who knows um mm. but it's so nice and that's why one thing I love about the ocean, even when you think you've got it dialed, you don't, you know, and if we're chasing something new, there's a learning curve. I don't care if you have the best guy in the world next to you whispering in your ear exactly what to do. You have to figure it out for yourself, you know, and, 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 and so that was what I really love about spearfishing in general and diving is a, it's super dynamic. Things can change. I talk like, cheap about the fish in my area that i can just go shoot well no that's not true you know yeah, yeah, in yeah. general you know them so well but sometimes it's freaking hard you know the yeah, ocean's yeah, yeah. cooperative and then mm-hmm. you a new species you know so i think that's all of us you know mm-hmm. uh spear fishing it presents day to day hour to hour man the challenges it changes and that's i think why a big draw for all of us is the ability to go out there see it understand what's happening with the fish the, the animals the conditions your own gear who knows what and be able to adapt and then work through it as best you can mm-hmm. that's fun because on land man it's like life's not easy i'm not saying that but it's pretty predictable ish you know mm-hmm. give or take day to day at least for me uh but when you're in the water man it's it could be different hour to hour and that's what's so cool yeah. about it yeah, man, you guys have got some cool species there too. Like you got Cavazon, you got um, monkey face prickleback. Have you guys got calico as far as you are? Calico bass. You know, it's a great. It's a gr- interesting you ask that because with we're seeing some warmer water patterns here in the last. Okay. They call it the blob. You know, it's like imagine mm-hmm. a north to south coastline right of California. The southern area is warmer. And then it gets cooler as you move up. Well, that cooler finger, if you want to call it, is extending-ish. You know, it waxes and wanes, but it's warmer. And we're starting to see some southern southern species start to move up. One of those is typically, no, I've never seen a kelp bass in my area. But about even 10 miles above where we're at, a buddy of mine got one, actually, last weekend. Yeah, and we're seeing other 
sheephead, other interesting species starting to creep up a little bit, you know, which is, which is, it's interesting. Don't know what it means, but it's fun because, wow, I'd love to get kelp bass, <laughs> you know. I'd love to get a sheephead too. They, they, yeah. are, they are a rad looking fish, you know. I believe they're really good eating. Um, yeah. What about the, the white sea bass is sort of similar range, I guess, to the calico and the, maybe not quite as cool a water as even the sheephead, I guess. You know, they actually are cooler water, man. Those guys are insane. Um, it's, it, that's like the species of California. I shouldn't say the species. It kind of depends who you are. But that is that the hardest species to target and get? Mm, gosh, maybe. It, yeah, yeah. It, it, like you say, it's like I was in, so example, you know, we'll get them here where we are where the water is cold. It's, you know, it's 50 Fahrenheit that's whatever 16 15 celsius maybe a little less up to like 60 it's a it's a relatively cool temperature range okay, okay. and there'll be years when you see them for a month there'll be years when you'll see them for i'm not seeing like you just go out and see them but they're there yeah. you put your time in um for months at a time and then they might also at the same time be down in mexico and you know warm <laughs> almost hot water and they move wow. around, you know. Yeah, the sea bass is a real, it's anomaly. They're the gray ghost, you know, they're, they're, they're here, they're gone. I've spent 12 hours just sitting there drifting squid, fishing for them, never seen anything. The guy next to me in the next boat got six of them. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, they're just a, they're, they're like the thing, you know, the, the, the elusive fish to go after for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Was that, that was pole fishing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, sport, anyway, man, you should have stuck in the water. That's what I know. I know. <laughs> but you know, you mentioned uh, the monkey face. I actually got. I've never even got one until last weekend. I'm not kidding you, man. Another yeah. funny you asked that. Um, I got a 26 things taped out at 26 inches, yeah, yeah. and it was oh. fat, thick. The little you know, those heads of those guys are dinky, but it was yeah. absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, you know, man. Uh, Jim Russell, uh, he's probably, I think he's a bit further north than you, but he's got the world record for them, and um, wow. he loves them, he loves them, and uh, and uh, we didn't know anything about him until we chatted with this guy, and uh, yeah. just some good stories, and uh, oh, how, did you cook, how did you cook that thing up? You know, uh, fortunately, there's this really great book. It's, I mean, it's anybody listening to the show would love to see it. It, it focuses on California, but if you okay. eat eat anything from the ocean you'll love this book it's called the sea forager's guide um anyway the guy oh, the Sam. author of, have oh, you Sam, i'll link it up in the show notes People yeah can go and have a look. yeah yeah he's, it's, it's on amazon i'll link it up yeah it's a great one the the writer is so super quirky he'd be a wonderful guy to have on the show i mean he's just the way he writes he it's like poetic the way he writes about these fish and monkey faced eels and other things, you know, but yeah. he, he breaks it down. It's like, if you cut the guts of that thing, cause they eat a lot of kelp. So they smell different than normal fish. And so if you cut the guts, it dilutes the meat. You can't just flay it. You got to like peel the skin off. So it's a little bit different. But when we did that, um, after <laughs> reading his book and looking at a YouTube video to be sure I didn't screw it up. Um, <laughs> uh, I smoked it. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah, dude, it was, I brined, we brined it for a couple hours in salt and water, threw it in the smoker, I think it was like 150 degrees for two hours, and uh, it was, it was delicious, it was kind of shrimp-like, yeah. sweet-ish, um, okay. but uh, yeah, it was just really good, I mean, it was, I'd never had them before, I've never even seen one in the ocean for all my years, and there was one, this massive one sitting there, and I got them. <laughs> I love it. So how, how, how did you learn how to smoke fish? Did you, is it another YouTube video thing? Like, have you got some go-to resources for like mad smoking recipes and stuff? Not at all, man. I smoke meats a little bit here and there. I have a pretty nice little smoker. My father-in-law bought me a couple of years ago and, uh, it's just fun, you know, yeah. throwing stuff in there and see what happens. And then, uh, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. In Google, it's like, what do we ever do without it? You know, yeah, you know, sure. Google up smoke eel recipe, and it just says throw in the brine, put it at this temperature for this long, and then see what you get. You know, and it came out killer. You know, <laughs> let's chuck a challenge out to the Name Spirit listeners community. Like, if you guys have got a good like fish smoking, seafood smoking uh, YouTube channel or Vimeo channel, whatever, 
chuck that stuff in the comments. Let me know. Oh. Drinking and spirit. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out because I want to do more with smoking. So uh, cool, Josh. All right, man. Hey, um, so I guess I want to talk a little bit about what challenges you face with spearfishing now. I mean, obviously, you know, as we get a bit older in life, we just seem to get busier. So time and availability is a huge one. But I mean, what kind of um yeah, what challenges are you facing and how are you kind of dealing with them? Yeah. You know, I, I think you, you pretty much nailed it, at least for me, with the age thing. Um, I, as I, a, we all have our little aches and pains, but, you know, I get cramps, man. And maybe it's the cold water, but my legs cramp up. I've always had that, like, na- by nature. And they just, yeah, see, right. my, cr- my legs will cramp up more quickly in the water as I get older. And that's, I mean, anybody who knows, I mean, a calf cramp, that sucks when you're full leg, like hamstring yeah. lockout, yeah, you, yeah. you can't even kick. It's weird. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't sound I've like a big a deal. Yeah, a and then you got this, kick to the surface with one leg. <laughs> and you feel like, yeah. And then you have this thick wetsuit and you can't really remove your arms so well. Yeah. You're not really swimming. You can. Um, and so one thing, so that's one. And I, and when I do a lot of long distance paddling and, and surfing for hours, happens to and so there's i have like these like um they're not salt tablets they're called enduralites it's like magnesium calcium oh, it's gonna ask for that. yeah and it's a great one hammer nutrition i love it i've tried it on everything and i've done like you know 30 mile paddleboard contests where i have to have these things or else i cramp up and my d's done yeah. so um yeah it's got all the nutrient all this the calcium magnesium with all those different things all rolled into one hammer nutrition and duralites Anybody who's got cramps, I definitely recommend it. Um, really helped me out a lot. So that's been one is just, but you know, you, sometimes you're so, you're running, you get in the water and you're like, oh shit, I forgot my little things. And then, oh, here comes the cramp, you know, and I've had, to, like, had a couple of fish on my back, yeah. basically swimming on the surface. Like, then you got your spear gun and then you get to the stairs of the beach and where we are it's rocky and you gotta like scrab up the rocks and your calves are cramped up it's just like this whole scene you know um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's good, so good motivation to make sure you have like a five-day checklist and put your magnesium uh, what, what is the hammer hammer yeah. endure lights i think you said they were put yeah. them on your checklist maybe so All right no you're dead on and that's a good one that checklist of your stuff you know i'm, I'm a huge fan of that the second thing for me too is I'll, I'll send is, you one after the show. We got one. We got oh, a dog awesome. day check. You can just oh, chuck yeah. your own thing in. That'll be. No, I I just have one in the garage. So that way, because how how shit is it when you rock up at a dive spot? Maybe you've driven for an hour and a half, and you haven't yeah. got your booties or something like something oh, like yeah. really like just yeah. I've ruined it. Yeah. Something and obvious. I've done, it, I've, I've done it with some of the best dudes too. Like they haven't even bought their masks. Yeah, and, uh, it's really experienced guy in New Zealand. I went diving with him, and uh, he didn't have his dive mask. We shared a dive yeah. mask. <laughs> <laughs> it was the ultimate buddy diving, sharing a dive mask. So, was like, you, you want to spit in it, or am I spitting in it? Like, <laughs> but, uh, spit it. <laughs> yeah. I spit in it. Yeah, you do the right lens, I'll do the left. So, but, uh, I know, you know it's hard, man. It, there's so I, many different pieces, you know, and then uh, you know. You get excited. Where's my stuff? You're like, oh, I think I got it all. And then you show up and you don't, you know, and that's, and we'll talk about, I think a little bit too, with bringing kids out, you know, it's like double, triple, quadruple checking of stuff, you know, Uh, so lists are cool, you know, and the other piece too, to finish up real quick is I think leg strength for me, you know, um, the longer I want to, there's days when I wanted to stay out longer and realized I was a little bit further out which is fine i'm very comfortable in the water wasn't like a scare factor but just having a little bit more leg strength to maybe you know finish it strong or or to power through some kelp or to punch a dive or whatever that is and so you know just kind of be a little bit more aware of my i don't know my workout routine which i don't really have one but not just is really hey make sure my legs are strong you know And, and that's a nice thing to 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 do 100%. 100%. I like how you sort of had your obstacles and then you drop two things you're doing to kind of improve them. One was the, the magnesium tablets, the Endura Power Lights, whatever. And uh, the second is you've kind of re- recognized that, you know, your legs are a huge issue. I mean, Turbo has has huge issues with this as well. And he started a 
uh, workout routine and really strengthened his feet and his calves. And uh, oh. he, he has a lot less slot now in his kicking style. And because uh, he used to cramp as well. And by the end of the day, he was just wrecked. And, and now he's got yeah. this workout routine that incorporates oh, some of cool. those movements into it. Because it really is your, your, um, it, it re- your legs are what you rely on all day, especially when you dive. I know. So, yep. Yep. So it's a big one. So I like it, man. Um, yeah, cool. The other thing is, before you talk disparagingly about your local diving conditions, especially after <laughs> going out blue water diving, um, I want you to tell me about one species that you've kind of started to get dialed in, and uh, what hunting technique do you use to kind of get these things all the time? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of, and you mentioned it, Cabazon. You know, it's uh, for folks who know, you know, it, it's just one of these really, it's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous fish that's camouflaged ultimately you know if yep. you are you could see a purple one and then uh two minutes later you could see a blue one they okay. are because that one's next to this type of algae that one's in more coral and pink algae and so when it comes to like crypticness and camouflage they are they're and they're just hunkered down they don't move. You don't see them. They're a rock, you know? And so they're a fun one, you know, and they taste absolutely delicious. And so I wouldn't say I've got it down. What I love about it, I guess maybe for my own approach, you know, I love the simplicity of, of diving. I love being simple with, uh, try to be simple with all my different activities. So I love hunting for these guys because you don't need for the most part, a float. You don't need, you can have a spear gun. That's cool. I love the pole spear. I love the simplicity of, I have a mask. I have my weight belt, fins, and a pole spear. And then I have a stringer clipped to my belt and that's it. And I'm not diving deep. I don't need to because these guys can be in four feet of water. You can find pigs right there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I love the simplicity. I love the finesse of the pole spear as well. And I find mm. it works killer because a lot of times, and this, I'm like notoriously famous, at least in my own mind, for <laughs> this, whereby I'm out on a reef somewhere, deep, not deep, but you know, farther out, do my yeah, thing. Yeah. And the best fish I see of the day is in five feet of water when yeah. I took my bands off my gun. Yeah. So I'm about to get out and there's this yeah. big link cotter. Here's a nice fish, you know? And so, yeah. so what I love to do with those guys is, and it's so much fun because there's a little bit more sort of wave action as you get a little shallower in the reefs and everything is for me, I, a love and B it's actually, it's, um, oh geez. Um, it works. There's a pretty good return is I'm just creeping through where the waves aren't breaking, but the swells are rolling. It's maybe 10 feet ish. So you're not, mm-hmm. you can stay down, you're getting beat around, it's real dynamic, and the kelp's swaying and moving, but it's like, you get heavy, you weigh, wear a little extra weight, you yeah. want to be on the bottom, um, you know, and maybe, if, and I have have dabbled with like the uh, ankle weightlets, ankle weights that I've had scuba diving and stuff, so that you yeah, don't kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, get kind of vertical, mm-hmm. and you are, you know, you're still neutral-ish, so you, you're, not, you're not struggling for a breath, but yeah. you're heavy. And you're just, you're just mowing through the lawn and there's kelp hitting your mask and everything. But what you're doing is you're just, for me anyway, it's, I'm waiting for that, all that kelp in my face. It's going to move. move. Yeah. Typically when it does, there's this moment when the fish sees you yep. and you see it and you're, it's going to be like that because there's surge, you're bouncing yeah. around. They're not expecting it. They don't see you coming, all that. And I mean, I'm just basically, I almost have like, I'm holding the pole spear. We're almost right next to my face, you know, because yeah. if you have it away from your body, there's kelp, there's stuff, you're just getting beat around. So I'm yeah. super packed. Yeah. It probably looks strange if you took a picture of me, but yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden it's going to be split second, you know, and there they are. Not all the time, but, you know, pretty frequently, you know, uh, consistently. So it, I like it. Is it do I have it dialed in? No. Is it fun? It's really fun, you know, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. simple. I like it, man. So a couple of crucial things I picked up there was like, instead of being neutral at like 10 meters or 30 feet, like we generally weight ourselves for spearfishing, you're probably neutral at kind of three meters. So you're wearing yeah. maybe that extra 
half kilo pound of weight, maybe a pound and a half, two pounds. And that's that's allowing you to stay on the bottom without having to do like a half breath so you can yeah. stay there. And then you're keeping yourself super compact. Number one, that probably improves your accuracy um, as well, having that really good line of sight. And number two is like you're minimizing your silhouette for what you're hunting. And you've just got to be a bit conscious about what the swell is doing and where you're positioned with relation to it. Really yeah. love it, man. And um, I think that's like bread and butter stuff for guys that are starting off. And yeah. uh, and but but I I like I still like doing it. I've been doing this stuff for eight years. I love that type of hunting. And and here in Australia on the east coast, is a lot of big fish like two fish and things like that are often found in that breaking water. So ah yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun, man. You get beat around, and it's 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 different dynamics. You know, it's it's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Cool. All right, I want to. Um, we're going to get into the veterans' vault, where I'm hoping we can chat about taking kids out spear fishing, which is going to be excellent. Before cool. we get there, I really wanted to dig into you know one of the scariest situations or the toughest moments you've had out on the ocean. Um, it, it can be spear fishing, it can be paddleboarding, whatever you like, man. Um, I mean, cramp was a real interesting one before, but I really love to hear one of your stories about what's freaked you out. What did you learn from it? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, this is a cool one. I thought about this, you know, thinking, getting ready to chat with you tonight. And, and like I mentioned before, there's these kind of parallels or themes that cross cut or cut across whether you're surfing, paddling, diving, sailing, whereby Sometimes your ego gets in the way. It makes you do things that aren't the best, make you decide to go jump in the water and do something that you shouldn't. And so my story is, you know, there was in my 20s when we're all, you know, young and studly and little forever and everything. And there was, it's a surfing story, really. It was a massive swell. Like it was really big. I was at a spot that I'd only surf when it was small. And I was like, wow, it's perfect out there, but it was massive. Yep. And, you know, I was like dead set to go surf guys on the cliff. Nobody was jumping out really rocky. There's one entry point. You're going to get pushed down like a half mile to the only exit point. You miss that wow. little beach. You're kind of screwed. Not smart, really, on this type yeah. of day. And, you know, I was, <laughs> you know, young and brash and like well these guys aren't going i'm going screw it you know and (laughs) on a small board i should have had two more feet of board didn't strong enough to get through it but wasted all my energy finally punched through all this white water took 45 minutes you know it surfs 10 to 15 foot ish oh it was good you know it was one of those days and and i got out and this was You know, I was young. I never really surfed big-ish waves. And I realized as soon as I felt one actually go underneath me after I punched through, I go, oh, wow, there's no way my little board's even going to get into one of these things, you know? And and so I was that moment that a lot of us have, again, whether you're diving or surfing or whatever, that oh, shit moment. Like (laughs) when it hits you where I should be on land right now or what I'm doing isn't safe. You know, and sometimes you could like, well, it's going to be okay. And there's like this safety spectrum of totally safe. You're cool. Yeah. Uh, kind of sketchy, but I think we're okay. And then there's like, no, you're in danger to almost like something bad could happen mode. And that yeah, was where yeah, I was yeah. at. And I knew it, you know, so I swung around and I was like, Hey, I wasn't pushed down towards that little beach yet. My exit point. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get into one of these waves. They were moving too fast. There's too much water. And uh, I started paddling in, paddling in, took a, a couple big ones on the head. And I hadn't, I thought I was going to go back in. And by the time I got in, the current was going to put me in front of the beach. And I would just be able to sprint, paddle, be on the beach and be out of this whole thing. Well, what I did was I went in a little bit too soon. And when I got like, you know, where you would imagine being in like waist deep water, yeah, I was yeah still a few hundred meters from the beach with Ooh. like cliff rocks. And Ooh. there was like, I mean, I looking back, who knows? We all embellish, I guess a little bit, especially these pretty gnarly times, but there was legit six foot top to bottom waves breaking like 15, 10 ish meters less from the cliff where I was. So I was at this oh, moment, wow. the waves, it was a lull in the sets. 
and I yeah. realized the predicament I was in where it's like, okay, the next set, I'm going to get, my board's gone. It's going to be absolutely demolished. I don't know what's going to happen to me. You know, being a guy in the water, I wasn't freaked, but I knew that I was in a bad spot, you know, yeah. tired. I'd been out there for two hours, just basically paddling. And it was one of those moments where that adrenaline, it just hit me. It's like, you need to get the F out of here right now. Yeah, End of yeah. story stop thinking and, and go do it and so i got that adrenaline boost i looked out the set was coming and i just knew it was like you can't be here when this thing comes yeah. you, you you need to be on that beach that mm -hmm. end of story and i got that adrenaline jumped on my board and just pointed it like dead down the coast skirting rocks bumping over rocks <laughs> there's no and I just had that moment, that adrenaline rush, got out of it as that set came, hit the beach. And it, oh. was, well, it was, it was fine. People were on the cliff, like, I got up. This guy's like, what were you doing? And I was like, dude, I, it was stupid, blah, blah, blah. The point of it is, like we mentioned, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like sometimes we want to go after a fish so bad. He's in a crack or I can know I can dive that deep or whatever discipline the ocean. It's like, and that's one thing I love about it. It checks you, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. the easier, the more willing you are to check your ego at the door, I believe yep. the safer you're going to be, you know, you're going to have better shot at actually coming back in. <laughs> at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I, I think one of the things like I, I picked up when I was thinking about when I listened to you was like, you know, everyone thinks that young people have a lot of intuition and that, that they have this conscious uh, process, thought process for thinking about risk. And unfortunately, we just don't, you know, as we get older, we yeah. learn how to do like a risk assessment, you know, like they teach it in workplaces like, oh, do a take five or whatever. But, like, you know, until you've been around a few years, you really just have no idea about how to categorize that risk and decide yeah. what your actions are going to be. How am I going to mitigate that risk? Like, And your one, the, sur the surfing story, is completely relevant to spearfishing. You know, you've got to have entry, an entry, a safe entry point, number one, yeah. which you manage to find. You're fit enough to do it. But the biggest thing is having maybe multiple exit point strategies. You know, like, That's what it. am I going to do if the current picks up? What am I going to do if the swell picks up? How am I going to get in if maybe I have cramp or an injury or, you know, what, whatever, whatever, you know, you've just kind of got to sit, be situationally aware enough to develop a plan. So uh, yeah, really no, cool, man. Love yeah. it, love it. Yeah, cool. All right, All right let, let's, let's hook into Veterans Vault. And uh, I did have a chance to prepare some questions. So we're going to talk taking kids for spearfishing. And this for me is really scratching my own itch because my son is – six years old and um he was really competent in swimming and then uh i just took him to the swimming pool again the other day after a long long while and uh realized that he's gone backwards a little bit but um yeah so but let, let's i definitely want to get him out spearfishing so let, let, let's talk about i mean first up what's a good sort of rule of thumb for minimum age and swimming capability and things like that yeah it's a that's a good one um you know, and I'll start by saying you're doing it right. You know, one thing I've noticed with, you know, I have three kids and they're 16 and I have twins and they're 13. It's, it's a, you get to the point when there's an age where, you know, they're, and I have some ideas and I'll share like in terms of age, but it's just a, get them interested in even being in the water at all, yeah, you know, yeah. start there. You know, it's like yeah. you could hammer your son about he's not progressing and you need to get in the pool or you can just let him take his path in the water yeah. and find his passion for it. It might be tomorrow. It might yeah. be in five years, you know, mm -hmm. or 10 years. Who knows? I know you want to get in with him right now. Cause I was the same way. No question. It, <laughs> it's like, it's like the one thing you're like, I can't wait, but it's like, they got to find that passion first. Right. So there's one thing now, then in terms of times, let's say they find that and they're excited about the ocean for me anyway, with my crew. And I'm fortunate because where I am, we have a lot of families, a lot of other ocean minded families around us. And I got to be involved in the community and go surf with the kids and doing everything. You've got a lot of kids who just like being in the water with all of us, whether it's surfing, diving, et cetera. And so we'll bring four or five, my own kids and a couple others with us. And I've noticed like 
for, for, for us anyway, is when they're about 12, 13 years old, like the ones who they grew up pretty much in the water, they're comfortable with it. And I think at that age, there's like a strength factor and there's mm-hmm. like a confidence factor. And to me, I think that's when the maturity kicks in where, you know, it's, again, it's, that's, that age might be young for some kids, depending how they develop. But in general, I think it's like, A, they, they have, they can have the strength to actually get themselves out of the water and in, you know, all that stuff. And then the confidence of the maturity of, oh man, I might get wrapped up in kelp or I might, you know, my mask might fall off my head. What am I going to, you know, those kind of things. I think that age is for me, what I can see is to be kind of the start of the, the ripe period to get the, get the kids out there at 12 to 13. All right, cool. So let them be self-motivated to do it for a start. And then as long as they're strong enough to kind of look after themselves and get themselves out of the water. Um, yeah. Because I've read a couple of things like some guys say, oh, you should be able to swim 25 meters underwater. And I think sometimes these kind of false metrics because I'm just not, it was, it's good to hear your idea about it anyway, because you, like I've listened to an, an episode on your show too with another guy and you take young dudes out surfing and stuff all the time. So I know this is kind of definitely an area of expertise, like taking young people out and doing different water activities. So it's great to hear yeah. kind of your take on that. All right. Yeah, um, thanks. What, what crucial things do they need to know before they hit the water? Yeah. Um, this is like, actually, I think this question right here is why I like taking kids out to dive. Surfing, yeah diving different because I didn't really consider safety and, uh, awareness and what happened, what do I do if, you know, until much later in life. Um, not that I had any catastrophic issues where I go, I should have planned better looking back. And maybe I bet a lot of folks listening can relate. A lot of my time in the water was relatively unsafe. I didn't really have a plan. (laughs) I didn't really, yeah. wasn't really aware. I just, I was so excited. I just jumped in the water and I had yeah. a wonderful time. And I was lucky, I think, because looking back, I was like, whoa, I didn't know that this was happening or the swell was doing that or the tide was draining or, well, what if I had cramps when I was way out there and I couldn't make it in, I wouldn't have been able to get out. So one thing with the kids is I like helping them under, like assess and develop their own situational awareness a little bit, you know, like yeah, even no, today, see. you know, even, and I try to practice what I preach and I'm guilty and not always, but I'm just, okay, take 30 seconds. You have your mask, you have your gut, you're just, you're frothing, you're drooling because you're so excited. <laughs> just take a look, you know, yeah, yeah. take a scan, <laughs> see what, wait for the next set to come in. Maybe you're on a boat. There's no waves. Mm. Just, just, just see if there's something that you're not seeing, you know? And so that with the kids, I, I try to help them do that. You know, that's the kind of a lesson I think is, is one thing is before you get in, just what's going on. And cause at that point, these kids are, they're ocean minded, you know, and yeah. that, that lesson too, it transcends into other things, whether they're sailing sure. or surfing or whatever. It's just that seeing what's out there and, and, and remarking upon it and understanding and deciding what it means to you in your, what you're going to be doing out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so you, you've got like, you've got two kids, you're taking them out spearing. I mean, do you sort of like, maybe you get to a spot where you've got like maybe a bird's eye view, like a point, a cliff top or something, and you're overlooking like where you're going to go diving. Is it then you, you, you ask like leading questions and I mean, you've, you've talked about this 30 second practice. What kind of questions should, um, I mean, should they be asking themselves? I, I start with, and I'll, I'll, you know, as they get older and I don't want to hammer them with stuff, I'll probably expand on this, but really it's like, Hey, where are you going to get in the water? Show me where you think you're going to get in. In some cases it's basic. It's a beach. It's like, Oh yeah, cool. Other times it's a beach and there's waves and you, you're, there's a channel. Other times we're on rocks. Okay. So, so what do you, what looks like a good pl- spot to get in? And they'll, oh, here, we'll maybe talk about it for, you know, 10, 20 seconds or a minute. You can point out, help, help point out things that they might not realize. And then it's like, okay, cool. So where do you want to get out? Because sometimes that spot where you get in might not be the best spot to get out. Now, again, it depends sure. where you're at. But yeah. where we are, it's important in a lot of, in a lot of places. 
it's predominantly reef rocky man and so you're yeah. scrabbling down some rocks it's slippery you gotta time the waves you slip in that might not be the spot but we're gonna go dive over there a little bit and yeah, we yeah, might yeah. not want to kick all the way back maybe we will but hey if we don't want to yeah. for whatever reason or we have to get out what do you think will make sense and so just having them ask themselves what makes sense so you know so that when the time comes if it comes they're like, oh yeah, that's right. I remember looking at that little nook and cranny around the corner here. That looked like a decent spot for me to get out, just in case you know stuff goes south. They gotta <laughs> find yeah. an alternate. So, so that's a big one. Is just really where are you gonna get in? Where are you gonna get it out? And then that's the egg and ex exit and entry. And then just what do you see? Like I just ask them, like, is there anything that looks strange out there? You know, I mean, mm. there's been times when I've sat there. And actually this happened after a dive I was with my son. We got out of the water and it's, you know, where we are like you, it's sharky. And, you know, and we just looked back and I was like, all of a sudden the animals, there was an was otters and there were seals and they were all just real mellow when we were diving. It was great. Suddenly <laughs> looked out, they were freaking. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't see a fin. I don't know if there was a shark. Maybe they, not sure, but for the last couple hours they were chill it was all great we're all hanging out together and suddenly they're this one's sprinting that one's bolting they're diving like you could sense the energy you know it was yeah, strange yeah. so we're just like hey other what 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 do you see maybe there's nothing mm -hmm. but it's just good to kind of take a moment to, to see if there's other things you can detect in the water before you go diving yeah. in I think it's one of the powerful things about it, about the ocean in particular it doesn't matter what altitude it is it's you, you've got to be environmentally aware and uh, you're in a wild place. So, I mean, tide's another huge one, you know. Like, sometimes you can't see current moving. Um, yeah. but, you, but you have to factor it in. Or, you know, if you have an ebb tide and you've got, like, two metres of tide movement, yeah. how fast is that water going to move and things like that? Especially if you're in, a, like, a tidal inlet or something like that. Like, yeah. And uh, swell size, if swell picks up, is your entry point, exit point still good? Or are you going to have to change it, you know? Or, like you said, if you've got cramp, Where's you? Where's your ditch spot? Like, where could you yeah. theoretically like just like ride a wave and scramble up and hopefully not rip the ass out of your wetsuit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, we had a story ages ago, one of the early days about no stoke and getting your gecko on. That's what he says. Like, you know, like you um, you ride a wave and kind of try and suck onto a rock like a gecko. And then as yeah. it pulls out, you sort of <laughs> hold yourself and then scramble up. And uh, <laughs> and it's just one of those things when you're diving on, like, rocky coastlines with swell. It's just... Oh, it's yeah. Just, it's it, um, man. It, it's it's an art form. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're kind of talking about it already, but, um, I mean, what location is kind of ideal? I mean, obviously... <laughs> If they're uh, going spearfish and they want to shoot fish, you can't just go, well, <laughs> yeah, here's right. good and you've got some <laughs> crappy, sandy thing where yeah. there's no structure or anything. So I mean, like, well, how do you kind of choose a location? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I, I'm kind of this, I don't know, I, I'm a fan of, of making them uncomfortable because the ocean's uncomfortable. So again, with, with my crew, they're past like, they surf they've gotten beat by waves they they they're a little bit more they're hardy enough where when i take them out i don't want to set them up for like the perfect environment you know because that's not how it is yeah ever. For sure. you know yeah. and so <laughs> but you have to but you have to make sure it's safe and you yeah. know simple enough for them to be successful Mm. They got to get a fish, man. Of course, you know, that's, they're so stoked. So for me, it's like, you know, it's finding something where it's where I am, you know, it's, it's a, there's a, a nice, relatively simple, you know, egg, entry and exit point where, mm. you know, cause I don't want to be not available and they have a problem and can't get themselves out. You know, that's yeah. a unsafe and B it'd be tragic if something happened, but also tragic if that ruined them from wanting to go again because they, they had a bad experience, you know, but I also don't want it to like, Oh, this is like club mad, you know, it's like, Oh, it's just, there's fish everywhere. It's so basic. So I know where there's, where there's some fish for them to get. Um, yeah. it's relatively, the current's not going to be a problem, you know, yeah. cause when either when it's my son and I was a little older, 
we'll go do stuff where that he would go with me to dive the normal spots that I do. Um, my daughters, they will, but I want to be sure with three other bodies. Cause you got to remind yourself, like you're responsible for these kids, you know? Yeah. And when you have a few of them with you, you're not, you can't always see them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're some dives, sure. you're watching this guy or her, you're, you're helping with the mask, the, the bands, we're in the gun, you're doing stuff. And there's, they're all over here. You can't see them all the time. Yeah. So, a spot where you know that the conditions aren't weird enough that it might something might happen to them they might get in a weird spot while your attention somewhere else you know um so it's like a little bit of everything but i'm a fan too of 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 challenging them you know i mean because that's what it is the ocean's a freaking challenge and when you know it and you can do that i think when the key you know the kid is psyched on it you know they're already obsessed they're they're done they're they're locked in like you and i for the rest of their lives you know <laughs> and, we, and which is a beautiful thing because yeah. we can all remember those moments and then you have yeah. this young kid and you're like you're giving them a gift you know but you also need to give them reality which is dude you're gonna go out there some days you're gonna wish you never went out yeah. <laughs> you know? you're not gonna see the end of your spear you're not yeah, gonna shoot right. anything you're yeah. gonna rip the ass out of your wetsuit awkwardly on the way back All in, of... getting smashed by a wave. That's right. Uh, you know, All this is that. just part of it. You're gonna lose one fin and just be grateful <laughs> and kiss the rocks when you make it in. That's right. But, be stoked you're back on land. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And like, you gotta be prepared for fishless days. But I mean, all right. So like, you've got this kid in the water. They're um, they're competent, like in terms of they're kicking along, they're managing themselves, and they've maybe done a couple of dives or whatever. Um, do you sort of like hold off on giving them a spear gun until they're kind of at that point or where does that sort of come in? Yeah. You know that I'm kind of on the fence on that one. That's for me, um, you know, it's, there's a bit of understanding the, the kid as just a, as a kid, you know, like, would you give the kid a freaking a spear gun on land or not? You know, it, that's <laughs> not the right way to say it. I think it's like that's the one challenge with in, in, in that early age is you know they get excited man and heck I've accidentally shot my spear gun off I'm guilty too you know I've had the safety off and darn it my glove I didn't feel it and it went off some kids I think are a bit more aware now for me what I've done is I'm a, again back to the the pole spear and the three prong I'm a fan of that I think that's a great way to start i have some really small dinky spear guns but i've almost gotten clipped by one that accidentally went off you know yeah, yeah. and it was my daughter and she's super smart on it she was like oh my gosh i can't believe i did that very responsible but that's just that's the nature of the game you know so i'm yeah. a real fan of starting with like the pole spear so they understand the dynamics of the i think the important thing is them understanding they have something powerful and potentially harmful in their hand you know yeah, the yeah, pull yeah, spear yeah. yeah they could stick me with the pull spear that would be bad but that's harder to do because you're not at the surface usually with a loaded pull spear you just you yeah, sit yeah. there when you're about to take a dive you grab it and you go by that time you're by yourself when you're at the surface where you know people are flailing around you're getting bumped into each other with a loaded spear gun there's a little bit I think higher chance of like something <laughs> happening that yeah. is a little dangerous. So I, I love with this, because I, I, what I've noticed with my kids is they understand, oh, wow, I have a weapon in my hand. And the pole yeah, spear yeah, yeah. is about, you know, it's the most probably been most benign kind of spear thing you have, you can yeah. have in a kid's hand, yeah. you know? And so if something happens, it's not as bad. It can be bad. Then once they get that, then it's like, hey, check the spear gun out try this thing and then they already have a, a rec they have an appreciation for this thing in their hand that could hurt somebody but they've already yeah. kind of gotten through it with this other one that's not as you know gnarly so okay cool no no that's good we we needed to hear the thoughts around it i think um there's a part of it's about this awareness that they can have like if i've handled firearms or something like that i'm probably going to have that awareness but if you add in the complication of being in the water, all the equipment and the excitement. Um, sometimes it's not something you want them to have immediately. Yeah. Maybe just watch you for an hour or two before you, you know, really give them an opportunity to use it. Yeah, right, let, yeah. Let's talk about getting them a fish. 
Do you is this a is this a spoon feed one? Is this like a you scout it out, you find it, and then you just go, hey, look at that one. It's dumb as shit. <laughs> <laughs> go and plug it. Yeah. Yes. A little bit. You know, I also, again, back to that, like helping them understand the reality of spearfishing, the dangers, blah, blah, blah. But also like, dude, you're going to go and get skunked. You might go spearfishing five times in a row and not get anything. That happens to me. <laughs> it happens to all of us, you know? Yeah. And so do I, yeah, I, I love, I, but you also wanted them to be stoked and they get stoked on getting a fish i mean it, that's been one of my most you know uh my what daughter who's really interested in it got one i was her my back was turned i just heard this i got one and there was like this <laughs> guttural you know like you could yeah. just you could taste the excitement yeah. and yeah, she yeah. had this pole spear up and the three prong and this little blue rockfish in it and she held it out of the water and then that was like man it was all the, you know, the hassle, the challenge. It was just so, it was beautiful, you know? So yeah, yeah. that's what you want them to do. You want them yeah. to get fish, you know? And so, yeah, I'll be like, you know, and I will say, hey, I saw there's a couple of fish over here. Come check yeah. it out, you know? And I'll put them on it. Cause you know, that's part of the game, which is yeah. that, 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 um, the search pattern, the recognition, is it a perch? Is it a rockfish? And developing that your mind can, pick out that animal amongst the clutter you know it's yeah. blue water it's different but even a reef it's like coral reef or a kelp reef same thing yeah. they got to understand it so I'll, I'll be like hey i see some fish over here come check them out yeah. i'll just put them on it after that it's like dude it's up to you go get that thing you know yeah. and that's the hard yeah. part you know and then then they go get it so i definitely try to lead them to the fish so they at least see them take some shots and if they get one that's just killer yeah awesome and yeah, I mean, half of it's training your eyes, yeah. It's like silhouette and movement awareness and then kind of, you know, and then onwards from there. It, it's awesome. Uh, like the moment when your daughter shot the fish, I mean, you've really awoken the inner hunter. And yeah. uh, it's it's like it's not something that um, you can do for them. They have to do it themselves. That's right. yeah. you, can just, yeah. you can just put them in a spot where that happens. And, uh, yep, yep. It's set a them up. Privilege. Yeah, it is. I, you know, I'm very, you're dead on. I feel very privileged to have, to bring somebody new, whether it's my kid or your kid or anybody's, anybody, adult, doesn't matter, into that to feel that like, wow, that was freaking amazing. I love yeah. this. You know, that's just yeah. a cool thing. Yeah, that excites me too. Like, um, yeah, yeah, there's so many, so many angles to, it. all right. Like, um, I mean, we've, we've got some good sort of touch points here for taking kids spearfishing out. I want, my last question in this sort of section, um, but maybe you can add some more after, is like, um, how do you talk to them through like the ethics of hunting and you know, you know, raising their awareness with regards to respect for the environment and sustainability and things like that? Yeah, that's a great one. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of of this theme topic in general. You know, um, you know, just because we all love the water, the ocean, we all got to do something to to preserve it and yeah. our actions day to day but then also teaching the next generation ultimately it's going to be up to them to do what we're doing so for me but you got to do it in a way that you know they get they can relate to um yeah. and so for me it's like look you're we're gonna go there's no practice spearfishing you don't practice spearfishing you can go practice on like shooting kelp that's cool that's practice yeah but when you're shooting a fish that's not practice you're yeah. actually doing it yeah. And you don't you don't shoot something and then pull it off your spear and let it sink to the bottom and then go practice on something else. Yeah, if yeah. You're gonna shoot that fish. I don't care if it's a four inch perch, and I've cooked these things up for to reinforce this lesson, whatever you want to call it, which is you you are you're basically you're taking this animal, you're killing it, and you're doing that for one reason and one reason only is to basically feed yourself or feed yeah. others. Yep. You don't kill things and let them go. I don't care. You don't. Um, yep. And so um, I, I say that from the start before they even shot their first fish. I go, we're going to get a perch. They taste like crap. They're bony. And they might be six inches long, but we're cooking that thing up. You know, yep. and yep. we're going to eat it. You know, and, you know, and so they get it. And so what, what's cool about that is they, A, get that, like, that's what it's for. Spearfishing is not for your enjoyment. 
yeah. you get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but if you're just doing it to kill and walk away, which I don't think anybody listening to this does at all, for sure. Nobody, yeah. I, you know, but the kids need to know that, you know, it's not just yeah. a video game where you kill things and walk away. And that's that it's like, so they take that, they, they're very, they get that really quickly, you know, and then it's also falling through as the, the parent who's out there for them. If you're going to say these things, dude, who's going to clean it? You are. Who's going to cook it? <laughs> you are. You know, and I've been yeah, like, yeah. I want to like chuck a five inch perch back in, be like, well, the crabs lead it, but you yeah. can't, you know, cause yeah. it, it takes, it t- only takes a couple of times for them to realize, okay, the perch are cool. Okay, dad, well, what does taste good or what does, mm. you know, and mm. then they get, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to go for that fish, you know, and they yeah, kind of yeah. ups, ups their game, you know, yeah. to go after the stuff that's like, Oh, that's, that's a good tasting taco that let's go after the brock fish or the, yeah, yeah what you know yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's yeah, awesome just letting them know yeah it's awesome putting people in touch with their food again as well i mean when it's kids it's even better because they they haven't got all the baggage that um well, well they've got less baggage like than a lot of adults have about you know just hunting and fishing in general like it's so awesome about it you know pull the trigger on something you know all the work that's going to be involved <laughs> once you pull the trigger and actually land that fish the work has only just begun, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, you know, gutting, filleting, For cleaning, sure. all the stuff that goes along with spearfishing is, is, is that's the next part of the the, the thing. So yeah, very cool. yeah, yeah, and and you know, one thing too to, to take one more, take that one step further. You know, we have the opportunity with spearfishing and the the kids and next generation for them to realize that like the consumption factor too. Like, like I've been guilty of it. It's like. You have those days where you're just slaying fish and you're like, oh man, that was incredible. I got a limit. I got 10 of these or five of those or whatever. And then yeah. you're like, fuck, why do I don't need all that? And, you yeah. know, you're so excited. You're caught up and it's insane. But then all of a sudden you're cleaning it and you're like, oh, that was kind of a hassle. And then like you throw it in the freezer. And then like two weeks later, it's got freezer burn and you realize yeah. you just wasted a filet or two and you realize, yeah. man, I didn't need that. And so it's important for the kids also to like to get that as well, where it's like, yeah. let's just take what we need, you know, and that's, yeah. and that's killer and be really content with that and then go back next time and, and then take what we need again, you know? So yeah. it's, I don't know, it's, it's good to weave that in if you can. I've still got one bag of fish left in my freezer. Um, and then after that, I'm spent, I'm completely out of fish. So that is a huge motivating factor for like, making me prioritize my time to go spearfishing because that's right uh, there's so much stuff to do like i never have any shortage of work and stuff to do except <laughs> to make time for spearfishing now i know and, how's uh, that <laughs> yeah yeah and uh sometimes it's easy to come up with excuses like uh, you know like, um like in terms of oh there's bills to pay and i need oh yeah fishing. man so but now that I'm empty, I'm out of fish, so it's time to go again. And, better uh, go. Better go a <laughs> bunch of times, actually. <laughs> Maybe four or five. <laughs> yeah, 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 I had a good run last time I went out, so um, it was good. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah, I, hey, um, sorry. One thing. I got to throw something out. I always see you with these big old yellowtail. I think you, got, you call them kingies where you are. Is that right? But, man, you guys are yeah. always getting these big-ass yellowtail, man. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, some of my photos are from out here in Brisbane, and uh, we, we do get some, some good king, kingfish, yellowtail kingfish out here. Because um, you guys call, what you call kingfish, we call like Spanish mackerel. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. So sometimes we'll call it like yellowtail kingfish on the show so people still know like, oh, it's yellowtail. But, you know, yeah. we get them like 45 pounds out here. But yeah, in New Zealand, yeah. they, get, they get them over 100. Over 100 Crazy. So, it's just like shooting a shooting a submarine. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love shooting yellowtail, and I love eating yellowtail, and that's actually what I've got in my freezer. Some people complain about it. I've I never had it. a bad one because oh. season, seasonally they can get um, like soft, milky flesh. I don't know quite what's oh. going on in terms of their biology, but um, obviously there's some sort of um, some sort of seasonal thing that happens to them, or perhaps it's a parasite. Not quite sure. Actually, Turbo and I want to start talking more with like marine biologists about species species in specific, yep. like talking about you know finding out a lot more about them in terms of you know their sustainability, uh, their range, what they predate upon. I mean, some of the stuff we know, but from a scientific 
perspective. I know our listeners and community are asking these questions as well. So, um, yeah. Hey, look, let's wrap up um, the veterans as well. Was there any more kind of parting tips or guidance for people wanting to take kids out spearfishing? Um, the other one <laughs> is just be prepared to lose gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A weight belt's going to slip off. Uh, yeah. You're going to mm-hmm. drop the spear gun. Uh, you know, it's like, it's funny. I, the first few times I lost a pole spear, a weight belt, um, what was it? Something else benign, like a knife or something, you know, and that's cool, but just be prepared. Like, you know, yeah. it's going to happen. Uh, but that's, right. it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's super fun. If anybody has a chance to ever do it, you know, it's, it's introduce somebody to the spear and, and just diving in general and being safe. It's just, it's a special thing. Awesome, man. I love that section, Josh. All right, let's uh, let, let's let's segue out of there. What's the funniest thing you've experienced out? Hopefully, spearfishing, or, or or even just in the water. Actually, let's let's loosen it out. We've uh, had hilarious ones in here, man. You know, hilarious ones. Oh, geez. You know, you strike me as a dude that had some funny, icky friends that do annoying <laughs> stuff. There is a. Uh, yeah <laughs> so uh, while part of my ocean you know background is i was a research scuba diver for a while and i know you did a lot of scuba diving too um and there was <laughs> there's some uh we used to do some work uh, removing invasive algae in a, oh. a harbor um while i i'm gonna take you down to get my charger for my computer while I t- tell you the story um there was this invasive algae we go dive it's really shallow and it's you know sandy bottom harbor and um we would remove this invasive algae and and, and truck it out and the area where we were you know it's real sandy on the bottom and um there was these worms called fat innkeeper worms okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh i'd never seen one i had never i think i'd heard about them I'd never seen them and anyway the funny thing is is we're diving and you know guy i think people in general diving and people in the ocean have a kind of a sick sense of humor these things uh-huh. look like a man's genital you know penis okay <laughs> and uh like dead on and it's eerily crazy disgustingly accurate and anyway a funny story is we're diving and you basically grab these like massive long this, this algae is these huge giant blades like really okay. f- they're like a foot and you're like you know not a meter half a meter wide so they're they're all over you they're flowing you grab them you put them in a bag and you in a mesh bag and you bring them up and yeah. i remember <laughs> i had this big giant stock of them i they were flowing around I pulled it away and in my face and you're, I'm basically weighted heavy on my knees and the bottom stuffing the stuff in a sack. They part and in my face is my dive buddy holding this fat innkeeper worm, like <laughs> right there, you know, and it's looking back. I mean, it's just one of those funny things when you're underwater stuff, <laughs> stuff is just funny, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, for you sure. know, yeah. and so that's a funny <laughs> one. Um, I think part of it is like you're underwater, and so any interaction you have with your mates, it's like heightens heightens the hila- hilarity of the moment. Yes, because it's exactly. like it's completely unexpected. It's like providing a really different context, and you're not used to it. So any stupid shit you see, it's oh, yeah. just absolutely just makes you cack yourself. It's classic. No, uh, and actually, it's funny. The same guy who is my dive partner for many, for many years. Um, he got absolutely humped by a harbor seal. Like, and it's funny, he didn't even know it. Like we're diving, you know, and you, and you like your, your peripheral vision's like limited. And then when you're in general with a mask, but when you're scuba diving, you know, have all the stuff in your back, it's hard to turn your head, you, your flexibility in these harbor seals here where we are, they're really nice. They come up to let you pet them and they'll, and this, sometimes they get really randy. And this thing was just absolutely attacking is his his uh scuba cylinder his tank you know and he didn't really know it and then he was trying to figure it out and it was just, just like i said those moments where underwater looking back you're like listening to it like ah oh, it's not that funny but when you see it and you're 80 feet underwater and there's a harbor seal basically humping his tank 
<laughs> you know, it's just things like that. You know, it's just yeah, man. for some reason they're funny. And that's why you love to catch up with your underwater buddies and have a few beers and just talk about this stuff oh, as well. I know, I know, hey, I know. <laughs> look, look, a couple of quick questions, man. Um, we're going to skip dive back because we've been we've been at this thing for nearly an hour and a half. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've been man. having an absolute blast. But let's hook into Spiro Q and A, which is kind of like a faster pace round of questions, and, um, cool. and then we'll we'll hear what else you're up to and where people can find you. Um, did you? Describe what the spearfishing experience means to you in one sentence. Deeply philosophical one. Hmm. Uh, connect. Um, it's an intimate connection with the ocean. And I'm stealing Ooh. that from somebody else who gave that to me on my podcast. But when I heard it, I paused like you just did. I was like, whoa, that makes a lot of sense. And it's, like you know, I love it. Yeah, an intimate connection with the ocean. I just love that, you know. That's what it means. Okay. All right. Who has been the most influential person or people in your spearfishing? Uh, I think a good buddy of mine, Dave Benet, who's just a wonderful all-around water guy, who's just gnarly but really safe and cautious and strong in the water and knowledgeable, just kind of one of those guys who, you know, always has it figured out and is the, like, strength and intelligence and all that stuff you know yeah uh, definitely yeah a good buddy of mine all right love it shout out to dave all right last big question what would be your fish of a lifetime oh man i love that question because it's so freaking hard um and maybe it said bluefin tuna <laughs> It very well could be, though I have this weird thing after seeing those things, like I almost don't want to shoot them. I just want to go out there and like swim with them. <laughs> yeah, um, I had, I had that know? selfish for a long time. I was like, I don't even yeah. want to shoot one. I just like to be in the water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I'm, I want to shoot one now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that passed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was a brief, yeah. it was a brief moment, though. Um, you no, know, for me, you know, I've never shot a white sea bass. I've had never really tried that hard. Um, it's because they, I just, it just hasn't been in my kind of hunting uh, repertoire. So for where we are, and I would have no problem shooting one. Um, I, I would love to get one of those guys because they're so freaking elusive. They're massive. They're big. Uh, and I think that would be, especially where I am and where I live, that's like what, that you earn your stripes and you get one of those guys kind of thing, you know, that's, I think one of a white sea bass would be cool. All right. Sick, man. Hey, Josh, I've had a ball chatting today. We've had a, we've had a good long chat and uh, I, th I feel like there's more ground to cover and we're going to have to um, chat again in the future and keep up this uh, exchange in some, some way, shape or form. Um, look, where can people come and find you? Yeah, man. Um, this ocean life, dot tv um you know a podcast just much like you and turbo just humble roots having fun talking to fun people sharing stories you know and uh i've had you have a really awesome episode on there and i appreciate you coming on with me and what you guys are doing is killer i mean you're i admire you guys and you've helped inspire me to do what i'm doing you know just normal people normal talk but sharing something that we all love of just being in the water together, you know. Um, and thanks for having me today, man. This has been a ton of fun, ton of fun. I was just going to say, like, a couple of our listeners have been reaching out and complaining, like, why don't you guys do a weekly show? And uh, cause <laughs> at the moment, it's only every two weeks. <laughs> like, we're just strapped for time. Like, it's got a hard, man. Now. But, it's so hard. I was going to say, like, people can definitely go and check out this Ocean Life TV podcast. I mean, you've got, like, at least four or five interviews with Spiros on there. If, if guys are just interested in spearfishing mm -hmm. but there's like a whole range of watermen over there i really encourage people to go over and check that out and uh if you want to do a pity listen yeah you know, i've got an episode on there that josh graciously <laughs> oh so, that's a good one it's a great <laughs> one yeah no no and um and i, I, I really enjoy listening to your podcast myself so um i definitely thoroughly recommend it and uh um, have you got anything else going on at the moment josh like uh any anything else any activities? Um, I remember you were organizing a surf camp tour with some dude a while ago. Uh, you know, right now it's 
pretty relatively mellow you know um we do we put on my i give a, like a, a surf club a paddle club we put on a bunch of events here um yeah. start to and i just haven't put it together like you said the time factor there's a lot of local families who are like hey can you take my kids spearfishing and i would love to i'm just trying to kind of figure out how i do that with like grab an extra five kids i'd need some other dudes to help me and have the gear so i'm interested in not is we get kids in the water to surf just because i have a bunch of kids i take with me just for fun and paddling yeah. that's easy how do we extend that to like diving as well you know and spear fishing because yeah. i love to to help kids get excited about it you know so that's kind of the next big thing i'd love to figure out and and, and kind of make a little program just come out show up and let's let's learn how to dive and have some fun all right man i'll, I'll link up your contact details in the show notes so if people just come to nobespiro.com and you know come to the podcast type in even just type in josh bettis and uh no spiro come to the show cool. notes and i'll link in all his contact details and social media if you're interested cool, in helping helping josh out with some of this uh Thank you, kids, for fishing. Uh, that, that'd be awesome, and it'd be cool nice. to connect to us. So, yeah, yeah awesome. man. Thank you. All thank right. you. All right, Josh. Um, thanks for joining me, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shrek. Uh, and thanks for all the tips on helping me build a podcast. You're always so helpful, and you guys are all the tools and tricks, and I really appreciate it, and it's been wonderful chatting tonight, man. Thank you so good, much. Man. Perfect. Awesome, Josh. Awesome, man. I'll talk to you soon. Catch you, man. Okay. All right, all right, buddy. Recording's off, so um. Cool. Uh, well, it's still recording the video, but um. <laughs>